The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and uh, we're at Manitoba's Crop Diagnostic School, joined by Kim Brown Livingston, weed specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. That's the right title, right, Kim? Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank okay. you. <laughs> so, so we're talking water quality, which is timely. Uh, this year, also uh, last year, coming out of drought, uh, many areas saw water restrictions and had to look for alternative water sources. What are the, the main things we need to keep in mind when it comes to water quality for spraying? Well, there's loads of issues, and some of them, you know, some of the, them are things that we can do something about. There's there's a lot of products on the market nowadays uh, that can be used, um, you know, to potentially, you know, improve your spray, spray quality. Um, not sure what's in a lot of those products, and, and so we wanted to take a look at some of the things that we know when we know we have an issue and we know we can fix that issue. So we were actually looking specifically in this case at hard water and glyphosate. Um, when we're talking hard water, we're talking normal the calcium and magnesium ions that are in the water when you get a water test done you you can see these levels um, in parts per million uh, or milligrams per liter of these calcium and magnesium there's also potassium and iron and to some extent sodium as well but normally if you've got water where you've got the white spots around the, the in the bottom of the sink and around the taps normally we consider that that's hard water now how hard is it we, we don't know without a water test but we do know that there are specific chemical reactions in that water that will immobilize the glycogen glyphosate um, and make that glyphosate not work. So so that's what specifically we were trying to look at in this case. Okay, and that's what's showing in the plots here. Uh, the glyphosate obviously not as effective when using hard water. Right, right. So what happens with those cations is that those cations will tie up the glyphosate when you add the glyphosate to that water and then the glyphosate is ineffective. It just doesn't work. So there's different things you can do. There's certain levels like we have a, a poster board here and the 2,4-D amine is also affected by hard water um, but gly- uh, glyphosates as well. If your level's below 350 milligrams um, then you have to you know you have to bump up your glyphosate rate you can reduce your water volume so that you have um, a a less dilute solution of glyphosate in water Uh, what you can also do is add ammonium sulfate into the tank first because there's a chemical reaction where the ammonium sulfate will tie up those cations and then after you add that to the spray tank then you put the glyphosate in and then it actually works a a lot better in fact it works perfectly most of the time Uh, so that's what we're trying to show here and and that is something that is fixable but again uh, if you know you have hard water that's something that you should be testing we need our products to work well uh, with current herbicide shortages and really high prices we we may not be able to get all the chemical we need when we want it so when we do get it it has to work well we also know you know there's talk about cutting rates down sometimes that can work but if you're cutting rates down and you have hard water uh, sometimes that's a disaster so we need to know those things especially in times like this like with you know product shortages and high prices uh, we need that chemical to work uh, perfectly when we apply it. Okay. Let's go back to that that hardness definition of, of water. Uh, when looking at our water test results, uh, what number should we be looking for there under that calcium carbonate line? Well, if you want your glyphosate to work normally, if you're looking at anywhere's under um, uh, any, using a half a liter of the old glyphosate or what we call 180 grams acid equivalent, uh, basically a half a liter of the old glyphosate. Um, so if we looking at that, then you need to be under 350. So and if you're between 350 and 700 on that number, when you get a water test back, it'll actually have a, a usually a number that says hard water and it's expressed in calcium carbonate equivalents Uh, that stuff doesn't really matter too much uh, but just means you just look at the number and if you're over 700 then you either need to fix that water uh, with ammonium sulfate or you really should be looking for a different water source okay any other common water related issues that you're seeing when it comes to to spraying and and issues that we're seeing related to water sources well last year like you, you touched on was a really tough year there were some water shortages in some areas and a lot of people were scrambling to find a good water source and so it's really important to have that good water source and have lots of it. We want you to be spraying, you know, I like spraying uh, like high water volumes, you know, as, as the, the maximum that's uh, on the herbicide labels uh, just for better coverage and it helps those herbicides work better. Um, it's really important to have a good water source and have one handy and so if you do need to change water sources um, and, and even sometimes your regular water source after a drought year, we do see some changes so it's always a good idea to get a water test done. Uh, we've been sending ours away to Agvise Labs, uh, you get the results back, but basically any water test where you get those numbers, when you get that calcium and magnesium, there are calculators online, um, and I, the North Dakota has a calculator where you just punch in those numbers, uh, Washington State University has a calculator as well, I think you just Google 
calculator, um, AMS and glyphosate, and you'll find all these things online. And you can take all those numbers off any water test that you've got. You pump them into the calculator and it'll tell you whether or not you need, uh, need AMS and how much you need. So it's very easy to do once you have that water test. Okay. Another question I think growers often have has to do with suspended solids. Yeah. We, we end up pulling water out of a dugout or a creek maybe that we haven't done in years. Yeah. What do we need to know about that? Well, the, the dirty water just doesn't cut it. I mean, the, the, that's not something that's fixable other than just cleaning, cleaning up the water and using some filters and getting that water cleaner. Basically, if you've got a five gallon pail full of water and you can't see the bottom of it, uh, you can't see clear to the bottom, you cannot be using that water. And especially nowadays, I mean, our talk here today was all on, you know, glyphosate uh, resistant weeds and, and managing weeds within different uh, production systems and we need that glyphosate to work all the time we can't be letting it not work and work partially uh, we have to have it working uh, per as perfectly as it can and so anytime you compromise that like with hard water or with dirty water that is just not a good idea um, you know from a yield perspective if those weeds are still there it's going to affect your yield but then it also helps contribute to herbicide resistance but dirty water that's something you have to clean up that water or get another source but you know there are guys out there there's filters there's um, when it's being pumped out try not to disturb those water there's you know the, if the water is always being disturbed it gets all that silt gets moving around and then it gets uh, it gets murky again um, you know there's most people luckily aren't pulling out of flowing waters because those can be very dirty especially this time of year with all the rains we've had and all the runoff into all the creeks and rivers um, but even some of our dugouts too they can get very dirty you have to be very careful with dugout water it has to be clean how often do you recommend growers test their water source? Um, like I would think if you've never had a water test, I think you should get one done. And if it's a continuous, if you're still using that water source uh, year by year and there's no major changes, then it's probably good for a while. It's not a it's not a bad thing to do. Honestly, I think it could be something that you should do once a year for the cost of a water test and to have that done and to know what you're dealing with, especially like I said, you know, with high price for uh, high priced herbicides and her and pesticide shortages. Uh, you just you might not be able to get all the pesticide you need and when you want it so whatever you've got has got to work perfectly all right thanks for your time and your expertise kim okay thanks very much